So the second Blade movie is a sequel in every sense of the word as it is trying so hard to be bigger, better, bolder and more badass than the previous version but you know it doesn't quite have the same magic as the first movie but it is still a solid entry as well. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel Lifestyle Critic, I hope you're having a brilliant day. So in this video we are going to be reviewing Blade 2, which is the sequel and second instalment as part of Wesley Snipes' Blade trilogy and this time they bring in the mutant concept into the world of vampires and the whole lore and mythology of these characters which is really really cool and originally this movie was going to involve time travelling and was also going to introduce Morbius, the living vampire, into the Blade world as obviously these two characters are bitter rivals in the animations and in the comic book as well. However, Marvel wanted to keep Morbius for his own standalone movie, which we're now finally going to be getting soon starring Jared Leto. It's a very long time coming. And also this movie has another really, really cool concept, which is the deadly alliances that are forming between Blade the Daywalker and the key vampires which is really, really cool as they have another threat that is kind of bigger than them. So it really did remind me of the deadly alliance that we see in Mortal Kombat, where we see Raiden, Shao Kahn and Shinnok having to team up against another bigger rival and also in Charm the TV series, when we see the witches having to work together with the demons, which really does make this movie really, really cool as it adds a really cool new dynamic to it and definitely makes the sequel definitely one to remember. <laughs> So the storyline in the second Blade movie is that there is a vampire pandemic taking place which is really eerie as obviously we're having our own pandemic right now and this has created a bit of a super vampire ghoulish type character known as a reaper and they are killing and hunting both vampires and humans which has led to a bit of an unholy alliance taking place between Blade and the Blood Pack who are also well trained vampires that were originally training up to kill Blade and now Blade has to work with this specific group of vampires which is really really interesting as they are trying to hunt for the Reapers trying to find out what their weakness is and kill them once and for all and it really does raise some interesting questions and really interesting trust issues and alliances taking place between these different characters and also has something a lot more sinister brewing in the background now from a positive point of view I thought it was really really fascinating trying to work out who is on whose side who is going to stab who in the background, can you trust this character, can you not trust this character, all of that guesswork had a little bit of a murder mystery angle to it, which I think is really really cool. And also it is a pretty layered mystery in this movie, as like I said there is something brewing in the background that is a bit bigger than the whole Reaper storyline, so actually I thought that was really really cool as well, and also I think they did a good job in terms of continuing the narrative from the Blade character and also it's a bit of a new take on the superhero genre in its own right as well. However from a negative point of view they don't have as great character growth and development as they did in the previous movie but you know that being said from a storyline point of view it is definitely able to hold its own as well. So Wesley Snipes is back as the main titular character of Blade in this movie. He doesn't have as great character depth as he did in the previous movie but you know that being said he is still a really really cool lead figure from an action hero point of view with a bit of an edge to him as well. Some awesome action sequences in this movie and Wesley Snipes does a really really good job in terms of carrying this movie and you're really behind this character which is really really awesome. We also have the blood pack in this movie as well. You don't know all of them individually which is a little bit of a shame but you know you do get to see the true rivalry happening between the Ron Perlman character within the Blood Pack against Wesley Snipes' Blade character and their interaction is really really cool and like I said it's really interesting to spot which character is going to be supporting which other character. We also have a new character called Scud who is the new weapons maker and actually it's really cool seeing a new perspective with the Blade character and his support character and this time he is somewhat the mentor figure which is really really cool but that's not all as we also have Chris Christopherson coming back as the Abraham character and the scenes between these three characters then is really really cool. It was really cool having Abraham back as he was such a brilliant character in the first movie and I loved all of his scenes with the Blade character. We also have Leonor Varela playing a natural pure blood character as part of the blood pack and she is a really cool fighter and actually her storyline 
is really, really powerful and very emotionally charged as well. And she is the daughter of Eli, who is an ancient vampire that is obsessed with creating vampire perfection. And so from a casting character's point of view, while certain characters definitely could have had a lot more growth and development and focus, all in all, I feel like they played their parts really, really well. So from a visuals point of view, this movie, even though it was filmed quite a long time ago, I do think it's able to hold up today. Most of the sequences are very similar to the first one. I don't think the action sequences are as great as the first movie was, especially the first sequence in this movie definitely does not compare to the first one in the first movie. But I guess the main point of difference in this movie are the Reapers, and they are truly terrifying. A bit of a hybrid of zombies, vampires, and lizards. Definitely very similar to the lizards in Resident Evil 2, and I just feel like they are really, really terrifying. And you know, whilst the action sequences aren't as great as the first movie was, I definitely feel like the sequences that they have in this movie, and especially all of the underwater locations that they go to, in order to try to find the Reapers are really, really cool and definitely, like I said before, do hold up today. So overall, I did enjoy the second Blade movie. In terms of comparing it to the actual trilogy, I do unfortunately think that they do get progressively worse as the first movie was so, so good, even though I do feel like they rushed the ending in that movie. But you know, that being said, I do feel like the second one is able to hold its own as well. And like I said as well before, I love the fact that they have a bit of a deadly alliance taking place as Blade really does hate all of the vampires and the vampires clearly hate Blade too. So seeing these two having to work together, even though they don't want to work together, and even though these characters definitely aren't very shiny, heroic characters, they do definitely have a bit of an edge and darkness to them. Seeing who is going to stab the other one in the back, all of those sequences definitely keep you on the edge of your seat. And so for all of those reasons, I'm going to give it a solid 6.5 out of 10. I'd love to hear from you, so please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.